Welcome back to Weg's Garage. We're back here with our 1964 Triumph TR4. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you'll know that we uh, got this car put back together and running, uh, and then we did have a few problems with overheating. Now, we've tried a bunch of different things so far, but we haven't quite exhausted all the possibilities yet. So today we're going to be looking at a couple of those possibilities, probably taking a look at the timing, and uh, seeing if we can get this thing back fired up again. So uh, stay tuned. Mark was telling you about possibilities why our Triumph is overheating. We put our graphics department to work here at Wegg's Garage and had them come up with this super duper graphic of some of the possibilities, some of them we've already covered. Now the engine is running warm and there are a lot of reasons why an engine can run warm. One of course is low on coolant. Well we've eliminated that, we know there's enough antifreeze in this thing. Another one is the belt tension between the water pump pulley and the crank pulley. That we've eliminated. We know that belt tension is correct. Another possibility is the water pump. No, the water pump's fine. In fact, there's a brand new water pump in this thing. And it closely relates to item number four, a thermostat. Um, a couple of times we started the engine with the radiator cap off, let it run, did the test with the finger stuck it down there and sure enough the thermostat opens up and hot water just comes gushing out of the engine. So I think the first four we can pretty much cross out and say that we've licked. There are some other possibilities though and these are the ones we're going to go after. One of, is, uh, one of them is ignition timing and that's what we'll be doing today is setting the timing on the car. Another possibility is the mixture. We know that cylinder one and two are running a little bit rich and three and four might be running lean and with two carburetors, that could get a little involved. Another possibility, the last one we even want to talk about, is the chance that the head gasket is leaking some exhaust gases into the coolant. But first things first, we're going to chase the timing, get that set, get the mixture set right, and then if we have to, we'll go after head gasket. One thing that we've learned a lot of on this car is that when you're dealing with an old car in restoration, pretty much a good idea is trust nothing that's been done ahead of time to the car go over everything so some of this is old stuff that we're rehashing and double checking again so off we go all right so today we're going to be setting our timing uh, kind of getting it initialized uh, we're going to be using these fabulous instructions uh, that we printed off from Macy's garage uh, I would highly recommend reading them super thorough uh, and that's what we're pretty much the process we're going to be following step by step here. Step one is we got to make sure our points gap is perfect. Uh, that's got to be set to 15,000th. To do that, you just stick a feeler gauge inside the points there and uh, adjust the position of the plate while it's sitting against a lobe on the uh, rotor here. So now there's basically two ways to adjust timing on this car. First is uh, th this little thumb, thumb screw. That's kind of a fine adjustment uh, and that you can use, you know, on kind of a daily basis to set the timing with fuels and stuff. Uh, the other is by rotating the actual distributor body itself. And that's more of a course adjustment. That's what we need to get right today. So in order for this to be effective later, uh, we set this so it's exactly centered put it all the way one direction, counted the number of turns to get all the way the other direction, split the difference, and that's where we're at. Ours was like seven turns from one end to the other. Uh, so now we need to rotate the crank clockwise until we're exactly lined up with our top dead center mark, which uh, we made last week in last week's video, so check that one out. And uh, then we can start the timing adjustment. All 
All right, now that we're at top dead center, uh, now we basically just need to re to loosen the distributor clamp bolt uh, and put a test lead across the points. And we're gonna rotate the distributor until the light just turns on. Uh, and that's the point when the, when the points uh, just are opening. And that's where we wanna set the distributor is to when the points are just opened enough to turn the light on. Alright, so we don't actually have a test light, but we used an electric meter to determine the point at which the points uh, closed, and we've got her set to that point here. So now the points close at exactly top dead center, um, but what we want is to be four degrees before top dead center. Um, so how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to go back to our thumb screw here, and we're going to turn it in the A direction, which is according to the arrow, this way, uh, a half a turn because each full turn is equal to eight degrees of advance uh, on this thumb screw. So that's uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. We got our uh, timing set back to kind of the initial level. Uh, so the next step would be to kind of roll this thing out, uh, try starting her up. I think we're gonna save that for the next episode uh, because we do have some work to do on the carburetors, getting the uh, air settings all tuned up and all that stuff. So uh, make sure to come back next week to check that out. That's gonna do it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video. Don't forget to hit that like button, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Are we live? We're live.